In this adventure, we travel to Guthrie, Oklahoma. To artifacts, photographs, and paintings, the Oklahoma Territorial Museum and Carnegie Library tell the story of the determined people who laid the foundation for the state of Oklahoma. On the museum grounds stands the Carnegie Library. Preserved by the Oklahoma Historical Society, the library and the museum serve as a visible link between Oklahoma's turbulent territorial period and the present. The Carnegie Library, built 1902, was initially constructed with a grant from the Carnegie Foundation. On November 16, 1907, statehood ceremonies were held on its steps with great fanfare. In 1972, Guthrie city leaders announced plans to demolish the Carnegie Library, and Frank Pfeiffer sought to preserve the structure with addition of a museum. Thanks to Pfeiffer's efforts, the museum was built on the adjacent lot, officially opening on November 16, 1973. Eventually, the buildings were joined and now coexist as a museum, celebrating 51 years in existence in 2024. Oklahoma's territorial period lasted from 1890 to 1907. During that short time, Oklahoma was transformed from an unsettled home for 65 American Indian tribes to an area of prosperous farms and growing cities. In 1889, Congress opened for settlement nearly 2 million acres of former Indian land located in central Oklahoma. At noon on April 22, 1889, the day of the opening Thousands of hopeful land seekers rushed in to stake a claim. At the end of that first day, laws were being established in the cities of Guthrie, Stillwater, Norman, and Oklahoma City. A homesteader's first task was the construction of a suitable home. The typical post-run farm dwelling was usually a soddy construction from bricks, a prairie sod, or a dugout built into the side of a hill. The homesteaders next turned to attention to the planting of crops. The run occurred too late in the season for a cash crop to be planted, so the new arrivals grew vegetables that they hoped would last through the winter. The following seasons brought only hard times in the form of drought and depression. It was not until 1897 that good crops brought territorial farmers a degree of prosperity. Not everyone came to the area in search of farmland. Many came to establish businesses or ply trades in the towns that sprang into existence. Along with the merchants, tradesmen, and professionals came saloon keepers, gamblers, prostitutes, lending a colorful element to the era. In 1890, most of western Oklahoma, including the unassigned lands, were accorded territorial status. Guthrie was named the territorial capital. A little bit about the land run. At 12 o'clock noon on April 22, 1889, the unassigned lands of Oklahoma country opened to non-Indian settlement. In an 1887 letter to the Chicago Times, Ellis C. Bodenot, a mixed-blood Cherokee and attorney for the M.K. and T. Railroad advocated for the opening of the land. Boomers, led by David Payne and William Couch, attempted to settle the land 16 times before the opening. Their allies in Congress presented 33 bills to open the land. The Springer Amendment, a rider attached to the Indian Appropriations Bill, permitted the opening of the lands. On March 23, 1889, President Benjamin Harrison set the time of the opening for noon, April 22nd. An estimated 50 to 75,000 people took part in Harrison's Haas race. Of these, only one in three claim land. A little bit about Guthrie. The Atchison, Topeka, and Santa Fe Railroad originally established Guthrie as a depot in March of 1887. Guthrie, along with Kingfisher, was designated as the United States Land Office for the opening of the unassigned lands. Town sites were limited to 320 acres. The 
10,000 settlers who descended on Guthrie that first day formed four town sites, Guthrie, East Guthrie, West Guthrie, and Capitol Hill. The town sites were combined to form the city of Guthrie on July 17, 1890. The Organic Act of 1890 created the Oklahoma Territory with Guthrie. Its most prominent city as the capital, Guthrie, also acted as the county seat of County No. 1, later called Logan County. On November 16, 1907, Theodore Roosevelt declared Oklahoma state. In a ceremony on the steps of the Carnegie Library, Mr. Oklahoma symbolically married Miss Indian Territory, forming the 46th state in the Union. Guthrie remained the capital of the new state until a vote of people on June 11, 1910, moved it to Oklahoma City. Today, Guthrie is the largest contiguous urban historic district on the National Register of Historic Places. The mission of the Oklahoma Territorial Museum is to preserve the heritage of Oklahoma through the collection and interpretation of archival and material culture to present the development and influence of urban institutions. The museum documents the creation of the unassigned lands, the land run of 1889, the homestead experience, and territorial and state government. The history of Guthrie is told as the capital city of the territorial government and the first state capital. The Carnegie Library mission is to collect and preserve the heritage of Oklahoma through the collection and interpretation of archival and material culture of the Guthrie Carnegie Library that presents the history of and the culture surrounding Carnegie Libraries in Oklahoma statehood days, the city of Guthrie, Excelsior Library, and the Oklahoma Preservation Movement. The library also serves as a resource to foster education opportunities for the community. On the first floor exhibit, the Oklahoma or Bus Gallery contains a detailed history of the land known as Oklahoma from the time of Louisiana Purchase and the establishment of Indian Territory in 1825 through the passage of the Organic Act in 1889. That move on the part of the United States government led the way for the land run of 1889, which gave birth to Guthrie. Four additional land runs opened up the Sac and Fox lands in 1891, the Cheyenne and Arapaho lands in 1892, the Cherokee Outlet in 1893, and the Kickapoo land in 1895. The history of the five tribes of Oklahoma is interwoven in dialogue along with African American culture, resulting in the successful development of this land and its eventual inclusion as the 46th state. The Oklahoma land runs were heralded as monumental events in the history of the United States. Newspapers all around the nation printed stories about the determined settlers who moved to Oklahoma. Tales are told of the boomers and the sooners, of railroads and tent cities, and of the business people and pioneer families who forged the rivers carrying all they owned, from the eastern cities to the red dirt land of Oklahoma. Displays in the gallery contain numerous artifacts that typify the kinds of things settlers would have brought to their new home in their wagons, on the trains, and on the backs of their horses during the land runs that established many of the cities and towns that thrive today in the state of Oklahoma. The second floor gallery spotlights life in Oklahoma territorial with the hardships and joys of living in a new untamed land. Life in the territory was difficult after the run, two years of drought and inexperience trying to farm the sand and red clay soil led to desperate conditions. The area had sparse resources for lumber and little access to water. Settlers gravitated to creeks, rivers, 
and railroad stations to ensure plentiful water. Despite the hardships, Oklahoma thrived. Tent cities gave way to crude wooden houses, and in cities like Guthrie, impressive red brick buildings took the spotlight as functional and as beautiful as any in large eastern cities. Railroads played an important role in the territory and helped create an economic advantage for the area that exists to this day. Lawmen and outlaws are a popular topic for Oklahoma historians. Names like the Doolin Gang and the women who aided them, Cattle Annie and Little Breaches, and lawmen like U.S. Marshal Bill Tillman, who had his own problems with the law. Marshal Heck Thomas killed Doolin in 1896, making him a hero among the 19th century lawmen. The Victorian era was the authority in style, culture, and architectural influence. This was eloquently represented in Guthrie, the first state capital by the many buildings designed by Belgian architect Joseph Foucault. Visit Guthrie and enjoy the Oklahoma Territorial Museum, and they'll take you back to life in early Oklahoma. Guthrie is a national landmark district that provides an unprecedented view of a bygone era. The spotlight exhibit is located by the entrance to the museum and changes every year to explore a different topic or theme at all times with spotlighting and is available to the public at all times with spotlighting and backlit panels making it easy to read even during an evening stroll around Guthrie. When the exhibits are changed out, the previous theme is altered to become a traveling exhibit. The ecology of the Oklahoma Territory provided a challenge to the ingenuity and commitment of settlers. With familiar building materials unavailable, settlers were forced to make do with what was available. While some settlers imported mill lumber to build houses, many more built shelters by digging out a hillside or constructing homes made of sod. Access to essentials such as water, Proximity to market center, arable land for crops and grazing land were important considerations in deciding the ultimate location to settle. An average family succeeded on the Great Plains by devoting 60% of their land to crop production. The original 160-acre claim slowly grew larger as some bought up land abandoned by unsuccessful settlers. Farmers took cues from the natural vegetation to determine which crops could be successful in specific locations. Orchards of nut and fruit trees sprang up in areas where the cross timbers thrived and in close proximity to rivers. Despite a few high yield seasons, the majority of orchards failed as the climate naturally shifted into a drought cycle. The 19th century medical profession was weak and divided. It yielded insecure incomes, low social status, and no ability to control quality of care or education level of practitioners. As the 20th century dawned, the medical, pharmaceutical, and retail drugstore industries were busy drafting the anatomy of today's medicine. Many lives were lost to disease in addition in the desperate search for effective medical treatments. Many patients fell victim to fraud because in rural areas, legitimate medical treatments were difficult to identify and hard to access, leaving many to rely on traveling medical shows and salesmen hawking questionable remedies. According to Victorian era rules of society, manners were the most valuable asset a woman could possess and the only thing appropriate for public display. Amable women were organizers and refiners of elegant society where worthy men strive to impress. However, the turn of the century provided opportunities for women to expand or reject social norms. A gentle woman 
will be as courteous to a stranger as she will be towards her servants, parents, or children. She will observe all the details politeness demands. She must be amiable, pleasing, attractive, friendly, and loving. A proper lady will be well-mannered and thoughtful of others. She must always be ready with a pleasing smile or kind word. She must be generous and wise, which demands a never-ending education. Quote from the Lady Book of Etiquette in 1890. Clothing was always being a way to illustrate social standing, affected by one's political views. Corsets have been a staple of feminine dress for centuries. They created diverse silhouettes and held positive meaning. For women, such as status, self-discipline, beauty, sexuality, and their production opened a manufacturing niche for women. However, periods in history saw them decline in popularity because of political movements and change from industrialization. Activities used corsets to illustrate hardships as a symbol of a woman's constricted social position and a device to control their bodies. Corsets quickly fell out of favor within five years of World War I with the expansion of women's roles and growing women's libertarian sentiment. But their lasting effect is still evident, having shaped beauty ideas as they shaped the physical female body. What started as a simple railroad station exploded into a bustling city in April 22, 1889, the throng of people staking claims necessitated the creation of four townships to accommodate the demand for town lots. By the next evening, mounds of lumber littered the landscape and wooden skeletons erupted from the red dirt. Within months, brick and stone structures marked Guthrie's emergencies as a city of leaders and pioneers. Today, the ornamental Buildings continue to reinforce Guthrie's role as a distinctive entity in Oklahoma's story. As with any long fulfilling life of the city, some buildings survived and some were lost. While you're visiting the museum, you're going to learn about Elmer McCurdy. On October 4th, 1911, Elmer McCurdy and two other men flagged down the MK and T number 29 train outside Okissa, Oklahoma, expecting to find 400,000 Osage Indian royalty payment. The robbers rifled the mail, turned over seat cushions, drank a keg of beer, and forced the crew to open the safe. They escaped with $46 and two bottles of whiskey. They had stopped the wrong train. Three days later, a posse consisting of Stringer Fenton and his brother Bob and Dick Wallace cornered McCurdy in a hayloft in Osage Hills. After an hour-long gun battle, McCurdy lay dead. A bullet from Stringer's Luger automatic pistol passed through his right chest and lodged in his left pelvis. In addition, a pellet from Wallace's shotgun struck him in the neck. Fenton transported McCurdy to the funeral home of Joseph Johnson in Pahaska, Johnson involved McCurdy and stored him in the back room. As the years passed, McCurdy's body mummified. Johnson stood him in a corner for the curious to see. In 1916, two men, one claiming to be McCurdy's brother, arrived to fulfill their mother's dying wish and bring him home. Johnson and Whittling released the body to the men, who were actually representatives of the great Patterson shows. Within a week, McCurdy began a 60-year career as a sideshow attraction. In December 1976, while filming an episode of the hit television show, The Six Million Dollar Man, entitled The Carnival of Spies, at the New Pike Amusement Park in Long Beach, California, Chris Haynes grabbed the arm of a mannequin hanging by a noose in the Laugh in the Dark Funhouse. The arm broke off in his hands, revealing a bone. Hayes and other crew members, through close observation of the unclad body, determined 
it to be that of a human male. Deputy Medical Examiner Dr. Joseph Coy confirmed the body to be mummified human remains and performed an autopsy on December 9th. Dr. Coy found a gunshot wound entering below the right nipple and traveling downward from left to right. A 32 caliber gas check was found lodged in the mummy's pelvic muscle. Tests also revealed high levels of arsenic. The search for the mummy's identity made national news. At the urging of other members of Indian Territory Posse of Oklahoma Westerners, Oklahoma Territorial Museum Director Fred Odes became involved, along with L.A. County Coroner Dr. Thomas Noguchi and forensic anthropologist Dr. Clyde Snow. The mummy was identified as the remains of the outlaw Elmer McCurdy. Fred Oates took the lead in returning the mummy to Oklahoma for burial. McCurdy rests at Summit View Cemetery in Guthrie, Oklahoma, while Stinger Fenton is buried in Madera, California. Elmer McCurdy is buried beside Bill Doolin in Summit View Cemetery in Guthrie, Oklahoma. Numerous law enforcement agents and dignitaries were in attendance on April 22, 1977, when McCurdy was finally laid to rest. I hope you enjoyed our visit to Guthrie, Oklahoma. Guthrie holds a whole lot of history for the state of Oklahoma. It's well worth checking out. Be sure you have time to see it all because there's a whole lot more to see in Guthrie than what's on this video. But anyway, we hope you enjoy what we saw. There are some pictures of different places at the end of the video. As we visited Guthrie, ended our visit, and headed home. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a lot. And share with your friends.